God is indeed real. I, I feel privileged to be before you today. I want to speak to you today on the topic of how to be heard in heaven. How to be heard in heaven. As human beings, we have an, an innate desire to be heard, that is to be listened to, and to be understood. In fact, a major factor in the breakdown of many relationships today is poor communication. Communication is the root cause of many of the conflicts that we have about us today in this world. And we just like as humans to have our point of view heard. And when it is not, we can become frustrated angry or we may feel just sad because we are not heard. The noted author and self-help guru Anthony Robbins tells us the quality of your life is the quality of your communication. He is telling us that our ability to effectively communicate is has a direct bearing on the quality of the relationships that we have. And by extension, the quality of the life that we will experience. Good communication is an important aspect of every healthy relationship. Do you agree with that? Including our relationship with God. The more time we spend with God in prayer, the more we get to know him. And the more we get to appreciate his love and concern for us. Prayer is an essential part of our Christian life. For it is in prayer where we get the knowledge, when we acknowledge our shortcomings and we get to tap into the grace and the mercy of God. It is in prayer where we cultivate our trust in God. It's in prayer that we develop this deep relationship with God. Prayer is a unique privilege that is extended to the children of God. Effective prayers offers the, Christians, the Christian an opportunity to be heard in heaven. Now notice I said effective prayers offer you the opportunity to be heard in heaven. Our prayers can either be effective or ineffective. Ineffective prayers fall short. It miss the mark. It's important for us to understand that not all of our, just as not all of our attempts to communicate with each other results in us understanding and us being effective in our communication with one another. There are factors that can hinder our prayers and make them ineffective. And there are barriers to communication and there are barriers to effective prayers. Prayers offered with the wrong motives can never be effective. Continuing in unrepented sin in our lives can render our prayers ineffective. Having an unforgiving spirit will hinder our prayers. Being unwilling to reconcile or to mend the relationships that we have, those fractured relationships with one another, will hinder our prayers. When we lack faith, and when our prayers is devoid of faith, our prayers is hindered. Prayer is the medium that Christians use to communicate with God. And we should understand also that, that Christ is the mediator between God and man, and that our prayers should give, and in our prayers we should give praise and honor and reverence to God because He is God. And he is a good God. We should also recognize that the Almighty God is the source of all of the blessings that we have. The health, the strength, the mental, 
faculties or the lack thereof, whatever we have. God has blessed us. Our prayers should come from our heart. Our prayers should be an outpouring of the heart's desire. And we see this in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 1. When the apostle Paul says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayers to God for Israel is that they may be saved. In prayers we make known the desires of our heart. Prayer is a privilege for the Christian. It's a privilege that is reserved for Christians. And the, prayer that is, oh, the prayer of an obedient child of God is highly effective. We're told in John chapter 9 and verse number 31 says, Know this, that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. But I know sometimes we get a challenge when we say that, uh, that prayers is reserved for those faithful believers. But the scripture tells us as much. He says that God does not hear sinners' prayers, but if anyone is a worshiper, and if he does the will of God, God hears him. We see that there's a condition that we must not only just worship God, but we must be willing to do the will of God. I want you to understand that there are people whose prayers God just will not hear. In Isaiah chapter 59 and verse number 2, he says, But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear you. To allow anything to separate us from the fellowship of God, to the extent that he will not hear our prayers is a very serious matter and it places us in a precarious, precarious position. This is an extremely out voice place to be. When the God of all the earth is not open to hearing your prayers. Many prayers are to fall short and are not heard in heaven because of disobedience. The wise man tells us in Proverbs chapter 28 in verse number 9, he says, the one who turns away his ears from the hearing of the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Abomination, I'm so sorry. Abomination. God looks with disgust upon the disobedient when they pray. God is not interested in hearing the prayers of those who live as enemies of his word. This is indeed a pitiful situation for anyone to find themselves in. Can anything in this world be as hopeless? We should know that God's eyes are fixed on the righteous. His ears is attentive to the cry of the righteous. First Peter 3 and 12 tells us as much. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. I know we believe that we can live as we want do as we want and still benefit from communicating with God in an effective manner. But the scripture speaks against that. It runs counter to what the scripture is saying. Instead, the scripture tells us that God is eager. God eagerly desires to hear the prayers of the faithful. His eyes is watching, is watchful for them. This is a great and wonderful privilege that we as believers have. So what then should our attitude be in prayer? When we pray, we must humble ourselves. We must not be proud, be self-righteous. And this attitude is illustrated in a parable that Jesus told in Luke chapter 18, verse number 9 through 14. 
And it says, and when he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. It says, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. You see where it is? His prayer is with himself. He says, God, I thank you that I am not like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. And the tax collector standing far off would not as much as raise his eyes to heaven. But beat his breast saying, be merciful to me, a sinner. And the text continues, I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For anyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And so the attitude that we should have when we approach God is extremely important. We are not all that. And when we approach God with an attitude of pride and arrogance, and with contempt and scorn for others, our prayers will be hindered. And so God has called us to be humble. And so we need to check our attitude and our disposition to ensure that our prayers are heard in heaven. Instead, our attitude must be similar to that of the tax collector that we read about in that text. One who humbles himself and knows that he is not all of that. That he got some issues and that he is in need of God's forgiveness and his grace and his mercy. And that's the attitude that we ought to have when we approach our God in prayer. Understanding that the creator, he takes delight in the humble, but he despises the proud. Again, as I said, our prayer must be from the heart. It must be sincere. And must be with understanding. You don't have to continue on with vain babblings and insincere words. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 15 says, I will pray with the Spirit. I would also pray with understanding. Our prayers are going to be with flowery words, other to impress those who listen to us. Because God is not impressed with such prayers. In fact, in Luke and Matthew chapter 6, in verse number uh, 5, he says, And when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. He says, Assuredly, they have their reward. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition, as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard, for there are many words. The only reward that one who prays as was described in that text will receive is the recognition that they receive from man. Because God does not receive such prayers. He's not interested in such prayers. If our prayers are to be heard in heaven, they must be, they must be done with faith. And concerning our prayers and faith, James says in James chapter 1, verse number 6 and 7 says, But let him ask in faith, not doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. He says, For let that man suppose that he will receive, for let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. If our prayers are to be heard in heaven, we must pray in faith. Faithless prayers are ineffective and are simply just words. Faithless prayers does not achieve for us anything with God. And the text tells us, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man 
that man who has that measure of faith suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord and perhaps our prayers are ineffective because we need to fade up Jesus says in Mark chapter 11 and verse number 24 he says therefore I say to you who's speaking y'all can talk whatever things you ask when you pray what do you say believe that you receive them and you will have them and that's a challenge for all of us since therefore I say to you whatever things you ask when you pray Believe that you receive them and you will have them. He is calling us to faith. We must have faith if we expect God to answer our prayers. John 14 and 13. Jesus says again, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That my father may be glorified in the son. That my father may be glorified in the son. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. What's it, Jesus? Our request to, to God must be made in the name of Jesus or by the authority of Jesus. We must have faith, we must trust, we must believe the words of Jesus. How do we get faith? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. I'm not calling you to have more than what God desires you to have. He says faith comes from his word. And if we have God's word, if we believe God's word, if we trust God's word, if we take him at his word, hopefully we will have faith. Not because we read God's word and memorize God's word means we have faith. If I have money in my pocket, and if I don't use it, if I don't believe that it's of any use, if I, don't, if I take it to the merchant, and if I don't take it to the merchant because I don't believe that the merchant will take it, does it serve me any purpose? I must employ that which I have. And so the word that you have, it needs to become alive in your life. What is faith? Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. You know why a lot of times we don't even have faith? Because we don't even have hope. That's a serious indictment, you know. We can't even develop hope because hope is a strong and confident expectation to have hope you gotta have faith it is a strong confident expectation so how are you going to move from hope to faith it says faith is the substance what is the substance we know we got some engineers in here Sub substance is that which is real it's physical matter it's a tangible thing it's a solid presence he says if you have faith you have substance faith is the substance of the things that you hope for Shane, what is evidence it's a body of facts it's information that indicates whether or not a belief or a preposition is either true or valid. 
And so he is essentially telling us that now faith is the substance. When you have faith, you have the material thing, the tangible that you hope for. When you have faith, you have the proof. You have that body of facts. You have that information that indicates that the proposition or belief is truth or wallet, true or wallet. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. We must pray to God and ask God to develop us with hope and faith. Because if we don't have hope, we dare not even ask God. And sometimes we ask God for some bold things. And this morning we talked about uh, the prophet Elijah and the 450 prophets of, of Baal. He was a bold man of God. We talked about how after the, the, the false prophets could not get their God to act and to bring fire on the altar. The man of God made it extremely difficult. He had them pour all kind of water on the altar. Soak it. And he had confidence that God was going to do what he was asking God to do. He had faith. That's the same man that stopped it from raining. He has faith and we were told that he's just like us. He's man just like you and me. If we do not have faith, if we do not pray with faith, our prayers will not make it to heaven. Another requirement for our prayers to be heard in heaven is that we must forgive others. And sometimes our prayers are ineffective because we will hold on to things. And when you hold it on, you ain't getting nothing because you keep holding on. In Mark chapter 11, verse number 25 and 26, he says, And whenever you stand praying, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, Forgive him. Forgiveness is not an option for Christians. And some of us take pride in holding on to things. If God forgives somebody, we have to forgive them. That's not an option. Because if we refuse to forgive, we cannot have our sins forgiven. And if we have our sins, we are lost. Since whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. That your Father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. He's saying you ain't all of that. You got some sins too. You need the forgiveness of God. And if you don't forgive your brother or your sister, God is not going to forgive you. And he tells us as much for if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Romans 3 and 23 tells us, For we all have sinned and fall short. Some of our sins are public and some of them are hidden. And because a person's sin may be public and yours hidden, their sin ain't no greater than yours. All will lead you to hell. And so it is important that we learn to forgive others. Other than that, our prayers will not make it to heaven. God could not, the Lord could not be clearer. Could not be clearer on what would happen to us if we refuse to forgive. We have no option to forgiveness is forgiveness. If God forgive us how we want to forgive people, ain't none of us will make it, you know. We got to do better in this, in this regard. We got to do better. Because if we do not do better, we are ineffective. In our walk and in our prayers. The Lord will not forgive us if we do not forgive. Those whom he has forgiven. And we ourselves will be eternally lost. We looking down on our brother and our sister. 
thinking we all that, we will be in danger of hell's fire. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse number 2 says, It's your sins that separate us from God. And if we do not watch out, we will not make it true. We'll have problems at the gate. And so we must develop a forgiving attitude towards all people so that God may forgive us when we trespass. I want to say to you also that our, our, our prayers are hindered simply because some of us got bad ways. How we treat one another. We won't be disgusted. We won't be bad ways. Well, yeah, you said it. <laughs> First Peter chapter 3, verse number 7, particularly uh, talking about the marital relationship here now. And I'm going to expand this too. My husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, and uh, also as being heirs together in the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Sometimes our relationship, how we treat one another in our marriage relationship, hinders our prayers. We want to pray to God and we got contempt for our brother and our sister. We treating our brother and sister as dirt. We exalting ourselves in our own mind saying we better than them. That's not the attitude that we ought to have when we approach God in prayer. That's why our prayers are ineffective. We should not just pray when we are in trouble. We should be praying regularly. It should be a habit. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Pray, pray for everything and anything. We have to pray fervently in James chapter 5 and verse number 16. It says the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. It's effective, it produces much. It must be passionate in the way we pray. Things we ask for in our prayers must be in accordance with God's word. And sometimes our prayers are not heard. It doesn't make it as far as it needs to go because what we're asking for is not in accordance with God's word. First John 5 and verse number 14, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If you want to know what his will is, go to God's word. And I always say, if you, before you pray, sometimes, you know, sometimes before you exercise, you got to warm up. Before you pray, sometimes you got to warm up. Do some stretches. Look in God's word. Form up your faith. Build your faith. See what you're asking for if you're requesting what you're asking God to do for you is according to his will. Then you're going to know you can have faith because it's in God's word. When you find it in God's word, understand that if it's a promise of God, that only one answer can happen if it's a promise of God. And that's yes. According to Second, P, second, second Corinthians. Well, I, let, me, let me leave that clock alone. <laughs> you're all off tomorrow. You're all off tomorrow. And you better be out here tonight. <laughs> so you're off to you, so you do. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 20. For all the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen. What amen mean? So be it. So, I want to say how positive that is. For all the promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen. So be it. Watch this now. To the glory of God, through us. God wants to receive glory through us. And so our request to God must not contradict his will, but must be in agreement with his will. A 
lot of times our prayers are ineffective because we only know to pray when we have panic prayers. We have to understand that there's a need for every believer to pray. You know, Jesus had to pray, you know. In Luke chapter 12, uh, 6 and verse number 12, he says, Jesus continued all night in prayer to God. He's the Son of God and he needed to pray all night. And we can't even pray for our way. He's the Son of God, and in Luke chapter 22 and verse number 44, it says, And being in agony, he prayed even more, even more earnestly. So the, the more problems you're in, the deeper your prayer should be. In Acts chapter 2, verse number 42, the, the early church, the early Christians, they continued steadfastly in prayers. In Acts chapter 6, verse number 4, the apostles, they gave them, they, they wanted to make some arrangements so that they can give themselves continually to prayers. And so if they needed to pray, surely we need to pray also. God has power. I can conclude now. I can keep you too long. God has power to keep his promises. God can do that which man say is impossible. And we had two examples of that this year. Two. God gave us two examples. So we should know that with God all things are possible. When man writes you off, man don't have the final say. It's God who has the final say. God can do more than we could ask or imagine. And I know some of us got some serious imagination, but even your imagination can't compare. God can do even more than you can imagine. Because He is God. Our God is Abel. And that probably should be His name. Abel is middle name. Because He is Abel. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, God is able to make all grace abound to you. That you always have sufficiently a sufficiency in all things. That you may have abundance for every good work. And in Romans chapter 8, verse number 28, and I like this. We ought to notice all things work for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. If you satisfy the requirements of that text, then you ought to have faith. You have to have a lot of confidence. If you love God, if you're called according to his purpose, then you ought to expect that all things will work well for you. Because God's word said it. And if his word said it, then that's all we need to worry about. Let's all make sure. Make sure that your prayers are heard in heaven. Effective prayers will get your prayers up to that kind of height. Those are my words of encouragement to you. If you need some prayers, we invite you to come.